Today we're going to talk about greasing your John Deere 60G mini excavator. You're going to want to start with the stick and boom extended and the thumb retracted. When in doubt, you can always reference the periodic maintenance manual here on the back of the cab. It does show you grease points. Something to note, you never want to put the grease gun directly onto a packed fitting um, because any contamination on that is going to get pushed into the component you're greasing. So a little screwdriver, you can kind of clean it out, paper towel, wipe it off. Just kind of prep the fitting for accepting grease and keeping things cleanly. So something to note is, as you can see on this side of the pin, and if you come around here, this side of the pin, there is no grease nipples because the pin and bushing gets greased through the actual knuckle. And if you come down here, you'll see there is no grease nipples on this H-link part, uh, the knuckle part of the H-link. Some pins actually do accept grease. So just something to look for if you're looking at the actual component, not finding a grease nipple, double check the pins, make sure they have a grease nipple. Greasing the H-Link bushings. You guys may notice sometimes that the fitting is not accepting grease. That is indicating that the Zerk fitting needs to be replaced. On to the stick nose bushings. So as you see the grease starting to come out, you know the component is greased to adequate level. So sometimes there might be a greasable pin and a greasable um, bushing. You only need to do one because that going through is going to do the exact same thing that that is. So you're going to, if you do both, you're going to end up over greasing it and it's just a waste of grease at that point. And the reason is because this is an aftermarket thumb. Mm -hmm. uh, Viking West has supplied their own greasable bushing. They reuse the John Deere pin, which is a greasable pin. So it's just a mix of two ideas coming together. Don't worry about it. Grease one or the other and you'll be fine. On to the thumb cylinder. Always for the booms, it's a safe assumption that any rod end or hinge point has a grease fitting. Um, you're gonna to wanna to poke around and, and just inspect, give the machine a general inspection. You're gonna have fittings at any hinge points, any hydraulic cylinders, anywhere that there's movement. Keep going. Yeah. They're now greasing the boom end. Again, just a reminder, give the Zerks a quick wipe so you're not pushing all that contaminant into the uh, component being greased. So a lot of the uh, smaller size excavators will have what's called a boom swing. So the boom will actually swing on a knuckle here. So there's a greasable uh, cylinder and then where the pin goes through, they're kind of hard to see if you're not looking right, but there's a grease nipple there. And then if you push these hoses out, there's a nipple right there. On to the blade now. Good rule of thumb, like when you're greasing any cylinder, there's always gonna be two. Yeah. Lastly, your boom swing rod end. So now we're greasing the slewing gear. Three shots, yeah. It's three shots, eight times while 
while slewing the machine, just so you're greasing that gear all the way around. Anytime you're, you're working around a machine that's moving, um, just make sure you keep yourself out of harm's way. You don't want to be standing in any pinch points. So part of your periodic uh, maintenance is going to be checking track tension. You want to make sure you're not too tight, not too loose, don't want to throw a track, or don't want to wear your final drive components. That concludes our greasing for today on this John Deere 60G Mini. Thank you. Heartless, or is it all withdrawals? Forgotten how to be your part of that final scene in Casablanca. I guess the heart is like a time bomb. No.